Hi, I'm Forrest, one of the reference librarians at the Albright Avenue Research Library, solely dedicated to African American culture, history, literature, and excellence. And you found me with this week's instructional class, Research 101, Conducting Your Research. This class will not only assist you with refining your research, but also mastering those same research skills, which will assist you as you explore and utilize all Burns and Atlanta Fulton Public's library and electronic resources. So at any time, if you'd like to continuously explore what's presented, you can pause this video at any time. Let's get started. <laughs> now first, in order to conduct your research properly, you must choose and define a topic. Now, when conducting your research, it's important to explore your subject. Exploring your subject helps you to collect as much vital background information as possible. This helps us to go from a broad to a more narrow or specific topic. When we move from a broad to a more narrow or specific topic, of our research project or prompt, we're able to answer the five listed W questions. And those ask who, what, when, where, and why. When you ask why, we're able to locate who's involved, what happened, when did this take place, where is this event taking place, and why is this happening? And what's most significant? As we continue to choose and define our topic, when we narrow down our topic, it's important that we also are able to acknowledge certain key terms that help us to move forward to our main purpose or the main idea. Let's utilize our example here. Near our broad topic, you'll see that we're locating information on the Haitian Revolution. The, ha the Haitian Revolution is a very vague, and general topic. We can look at information about anything, so it's important to narrow that down. Here you'll notice it reads, the social effects of post-colonialism on Haitian Americans. There are three key terms here that help our audience or readers to keep up with the organization of information and what we are presenting. First are the social effects. This helps them to understand the interpretive lens of our information or how we are approaching the information. The next is the post-colonialism. Post-colonialism allows our readers, our audience, to discernly acknowledge the time range or the time in history that we are exploring. The next is Haitian Americans. If we were to solely put Haitians, that would possibly exclude the narratives, experiences, and stories of the Caribbeans and those living in America, North America. So we want to include not only those living in the Caribbean, in the Americas, but all around the globe and world. So let's continue moving forward to see just how these key terms help us to craft our main idea or the main purpose of our research. You'll notice that the sentence in red reads, this paper explores European colonialization and how it has affected Haitian and Caribbean communities socially and culturally. When our reader reviews that we are exploring the European colonization, they're able to understand how we are approaching the information by also including other narratives that provide a wealth of information. Here, we are also including and celebrating Haitian and Caribbean communities and how European colonization socially and culturally disrupted and shaped the infrastructure of these communities. The key words and phrases that we utilize in our thesis statement or what helped us to create and craft this statement can also help us to explore other avenues of information or it may rework and redirect our research. The key words or phrases we will use are slavery in the Caribbean and Toussaint and Overture. When you are identifying your keywords and phrases, it's suggested 
that you also craft a list of synonyms, words with similar meanings, to help you to obtain as much information appropriately for your research. With slavery in the Caribbean, we're also able to explore Anglo-American slavery, which excludes Eastern Hemisphere slavery or any bondage that would redirect our work. We're also able to locate information specifically on transatlantic slave trade, which brings us to legislation like the Cold War. You'll also notice with our second key word is Toussaint on the Ilva Club, which is the name of an important Haitian catalyst for change. However, this is not his official and full name. Francois Dominique Le Toussaint Le Ouvertre is his official name. It is recommended that you always use an individual's full name or what you're able to compile and search with to locate as much biographical information, as much background and ancestral information. When we utilize someone's full name, we're also able to locate certain adoptions, marriages, even if they were to move and live abroad. Now, this next slide is one of my favorite and the most essential of today's presentation. Oftentimes we know exactly the information we're looking for, but we don't know the type of source that we're trying to locate and what that source is in a library. This chart helps you to discernly identify, utilize, and locate these resources. The left column that reads information needed provides you the list of sources based on what you're looking for. For example, if I'm looking for visual representation or photographs, I'm looking for, that's right, pictures. Within the library's catalog, I would want to locate examples of such. And the right-hand column, which reads examples, provides you examples of what that source would look like within Auburn's or Atlanta Fulton Public Library's catalog. So if I wanted to locate visual representation, I am looking for pictures. So I would want to go to my local library, Auburn, or any branch within Atlanta Fulton to access their vertical files, posters and portraits, or images utilizing EBSCOhost. Say I wanted to locate a list of resources or reference resources to jumpstart my research. I'm looking for a bibliography. And not only does Auburn provide bibliographies, not only electronic, audiovisual, even vertical files that are included in this bibliography, but other branches do. Be sure to save this slide or to use it as a reference as you continue with your research. Next, after you have established your search strategy, define and chose your research topic, and have acknowledged the sources you want to use, it's time to evaluate them. Commonly, we hear a phrase, fake news, or even fake information. And this sometimes can leave us disheartened to continue searching for information. To combat fake information or fake news, it is important to evaluate the source for accuracy, objectivity, and also to reflect your credibility as a scholar. So review the five aspects of evaluating your source, which are authority, accuracy, objectivity, currency, and coverage. Let's review these together. Author or authority, who is speaking? Are the author's qualifications provided? Who are they affiliated with? Are they affiliated with any professional associations? Accuracy. Does the source have a reference page, a work cited, or citations? Is the author's conclusion supported with evidence? This is important. You may also want to utilize or explore their resources to see how they have arrived or why they have presented information as they have. Objectivity. Does the author present facts or opinions? 
Is it designed to inform or to sway options or opinions? Currency and coverage are interchangeable and we'll discuss them together. Currency of a source reflects if it is valid, which means is the information supported by new research or is it superseded by new information? Is the information current or is it dated? Coverage also asks what topics are being covered in this information. Is the information relevant to your topic and assignment? So when evaluating your sources, be sure to review the authority, accuracy, objectivity, currency, and coverage. Next, let's explore Atlanta Fulton Library System page. What we see ahead of us is Atlanta Fulton Public Library Systems, which can be accessed by our official address, which is afpls.org. Before we go in depth, let's review our two arrows. First, to the left-hand side, you'll see the red arrow, which provides direction to Auburn's research page. The Auburn Avenue Research Library has its own official homepage where not only can you explore programs, reference, and archival resources, but obtain research assistance. On the right-hand side of this page, if you locate the blue arrow, this is all of Atlanta Fulton Public Library's applications, online databases, and electronic resources. This includes Mango for foreign languages or to learn a second language. We have Hoopla for TV shows and documentaries and films. We have our audiobooks, which are in our overdrive. So there's sure to be something for you. When you are looking to access the Albert Avenue Research Library website, again, you can utilize that same right arrow or you will want to utilize the website address afpls.org forward slash AARL. By doing such, it will bring you to a beautiful brown page. I like to think of it as brown because most of our collection reflects a black or brown community. On this page in front of us, the red arrow points to the library catalog, which can be used to search or browse our collection and what is available for in-house use only. As you know, the Auburn Avenue Research Library does not circulate any library items, resources, or materials. They must be used in-house. However, upon completing a research consultation or submitting our inquiry, you can be provided electronic resources, as well as the Auburn Avenue Research Library has a plethora of electronic resources that extend from reference to archival to local Georgia and historic information. Let's continue to see just how we can utilize those resources. By scrolling down to the bottom of the Auburn Avenue Research Library official website page, you'll notice there are interesting and colorful resources. The red arrow on our page also locates Auburn's online catalog. So not only can you review, excuse me, not only can you access the library catalog by the top right hand corner of the website but also at the bottom left hand corner so there is surely something for you you'll also notice in the bottom left hand corner by the red arrow is a large photo each month the library highlights a monthly observance to explore and celebrate cultural observance these are paired with extensive, great and thrilling bibliography that may jumpstart your research. This is what the library catalog looks like. You'll notice there's a large, long blue search bar that we are about to explore together. 
Now, let's explore and acknowledge what the wonderful benefits and amenities that are a part of your search bar and the library catalog. You'll want to first locate the yellow arrow. The yellow arrow is the location of materials. When you select such, it will bring a drop down list of locations. Again, the Auburn Avenue Research Library is the only branch within the Atlanta Fulton County system that does not circulate. So if you want to locate or search all the resources within Auburn's catalog and collection, you want to select the Auburn Avenue Research Library. If you select everything, it searches everything within Atlanta Fulton Public Library system. Let's locate the purple arrow. The purple arrow is our specific fields. Say you know the author of a book, but not necessarily the full title. This here, the purple arrow, this filter function allows you to specifically look at or locate the title, author, publication date, or even the subject of the material. Next to that filter, is a red arrow that indicates our search bar, which is self-explanatory. Not only can you utilize keywords, terms, but anything that will help direct your search. The navy arrow is our advanced search, which we'll get into in the latter portion of today's instructional class. But the green arrows at the top are your account arrows. The dark green arrow allows you to access your personal library account where you can place things on hold. You can see where they are within an interlibrary loan. You can also see what's available and certain citations can also be crafted and saved. You can go back to Atlanta Fulton Public Library System's homepage with this light green arrow. So you can not only utilize search, filter, and browse the library collection and utilize your personal library account from one page. Let's begin searching using Auburn's catalog. Before we begin, if you look in our search blue bar in our location field to the left, it reads Auburn Avenue Research Library. That lets us know the location or the collection we're searching. The next field is our specific field, and we're searching all. We don't want to limit ourselves just yet. And in our search bar, you'll notice the key words or terms, sweet potato pie. That's the name of the book I want to locate, but I don't know the author of the book, but I do know the illustrator, Charlotte Riley Webb. And because I don't want to locate the illustrator just yet, I want to search the title of the book. By searching the title of the book, you'll notice the same words in the search bar also are highlighted in the results list or found. This helps me to understand what is the appropriate or accurate source or what is similar to the source I'm locating. To the right of this screen, there's a blue arrow that points to our sort results. This helps us to organize the results we have compiled based on author, title, even publication date. As we explore what is on this page, to the left-hand side where our red arrow is pointing, you will notice our filter option to narrow or broaden your results with filter options. Not only can you filter based on library location, language, material, and also the age, but also the format and what kind of book, whether you want juvenile, young adult, or adult. To get a closer look at what a record would look like, the blue arrow is pointing to the book cover, which would always illustrate the book art. So if you're able to discernly identify the book art and the title, you're halfway on, you're away. Next, you'll notice the red arrow pointing to the title of the source. 
Remember, we are searching for sweet potato pie, and all the words in the title of our source are highlighted, which gives us a great observation that this may be our source. As we continue to look below the highlighted title of the source, we're able to locate the bibliographic information, like the author, when it was published, the date, the format, is it an audiovisual, electronic, or a physical book, as well as search terms to help redirect or rework our research. Also at the very bottom, it allows us to see how many are available system-wide, which is great because if the Auburn Avenue Research Library has one of these copies, that means it's possibly available somewhere else and we can obtain it through access or utilizing our personal library account. The purple arrow points to this where you can place it on hold or inquire about where this resource is. Now, if you were to select that resource, it brings us to its record page. The yellow arrow is pointing to the location information, which gives us the location of where the book is and its call number. A call number is like an address for a book. You can't locate a book without its call number. Not only part, but the whole thing. You must give the entire call number in order to access the book. And here, this book is accessible within two other library branches. The blue arrow to the right corner or side of the page illustrates the organization source where you can save, list, or place an item on hold. Now, we've accessed and located a title through our own individual search, Sweet Potato Pie which was by Kathleen Lindsay, illustrated by Charlotte Riley Webb. But let's continue by conducting an advanced search. You'll notice on that blue header search bar to the right-hand corner where the red arrow is pointing, you'll notice advanced search. By clicking on such, we're then able to complete our manual advanced search. Advanced search is a manual search which helps you to narrow or broaden your results. You'll notice where the red arrow is pointing, it provides keywords that you can include or exclude. You can also filter based on format, language, library location, even whether you want a kind of source, whether it be a music recording, audiovisual, DVD, children's material, or whatever you believe is fit for your research. Now, I've enjoyed working and also providing you all the wonderful assistance and guidance and insight to help you refine and master your research skills. There are paired resources with this week's instructional class to assist you at any time as you develop, refine, and master your own research skills. Also, be sure to like, share, or comment on this video. We love to see what resonates with you. Again, my name is Forrest, and this has been a treat to provide you great instruction. Can't wait to see what resonates with you next time. In the meantime, See you around.